Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Juma Mubarak to you all and a blessing for the new year, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'ufiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusna wa min sayyat amalina. Man yaadihi allahu fala mudillala. Wa man yudlilhu fala hadiyala. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahduhu la sharika la. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All praise is due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leaves astray, nobody can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship, no God but Allah, the one who has no partner. And I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is Allah's true servant and messenger. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves and do not die except in the state of full submission to Allah. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa ahlul ufithim li sani yafqahu qawli subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakeem. I pray that may Allah open my chest and make easy for me this task and loosen the knots of my tongue that these words may be understood. And glory be to you, Allah, glory be to you alone, that we have no knowledge except that which you have bestowed upon us. And verily it is you who is the all-knowing and the all-wise. Again, assalamu alaikum wa barakatuhu. Peace and blessings be upon all of you uh, for this blessed uh, day of Juma, um, but also the first Juma of a new year of 2024. And so may this year find you and your families and your loved ones uh, in peace, in security, uh, and with the mercy and uh, presence of Allah with you, inshallah. So Abdullah ibn Hashim radiallahu anh, had rela related that the Sahaba had, at the beginning of starting a new month or a new year, they would learn a dua. They would they would recite a dua in which, uh, as translated, would say that, "Oh Allah, you know, bring forth this year, this month, bring it upon us with security, bring it upon us with iman, bring it upon us with safety, bring it upon us with Islam, with from from protection from the shaitan, and with your pleasure." And so, when we recently rang in, you know, the new year here, closing out 2023 and now looking ahead uh, in the year 2024. Uh, this, we, we oftentimes, we've talked about in the past that the transition in terms of how our society looks at new years and, and the ending of a, of a final of a year and then the starting of a new one is oftentimes marked by a celebration of sorts, a party, uh, you know, a, a laundry list of different New Year's resolutions, fireworks, and, you know, all of this different stuff. Um, and, you know, it's it, 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 it has a lot of pomp around it. it, has a lot of celebration, but it also has, you know, a lot of these different things that um, really are uh, that that in in are very superficial in different ways that 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 it's very much uh, kind of like at the at the surface level um, and and not so much things that that go beneath that that are very deep in sense um, these even these resolutions that we make that that kind of highlight you know the end of a year where we're kind of maybe moping about not having completed our New Year's resolutions but then thinking about we want to start new ones because hey we were want to get it right for the next year these are resolutions that probably don't end up lasting as we can probably tell from the year before when we are uh, at the conclusion thinking about what all have we not done um you know we will think about uh the aspect of what are some of the most common things that people put in terms of their their new year's uh, resolutions and studies show that those are the same ones that kind of come back to the list whether it's exercising more eating healthier losing weight or saving more money or spending more time with friends and whatnot they they oftentimes you know will will come back on because they don't they just you know they 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 don't manifest in different ways so they start off strong in january you see all the gym memberships and everything else that we start brand new and then come february it's kind of all gone down the drain and so uh how often though do these things that we we front load, we say all these different resolutions, all these different things, 
how often do, do they, you know, when we start them, do they actually, do we see them to finish or do we see them actually incorporated where we, by the end of the year, uh, you know, we are able to tangibly see that, yeah, we did exercise more, we did eat healthier, we did lose weight, or we did save more money, um, or we did spend more time with friends. Um, and in what ways uh, are we able to measure that? But how often does it actually happen? And so, you know, as, as I mentioned, many of us can probably speak from experience that we come into that new year saying that, hey, this is a new year, new me, I'm not going to mess up anything uh, like I did last year. And then I'm going to do all of these different things. We have all these different re resolutions. And within the first week or the first month, we just kind of spiral out, burn ourselves out. And then we're in the same cycle as in the years before. And so uh, thinking about this context in, in the sense of how societally we view a new year, the conclusion of one and the beginning of one, it may be prudent for us to think about for ourselves as Muslims that whether or not the dates coincide for uh, the Islamic New Year and the Gregorian calendar's New Year, uh, it might be beneficial for us to mention and to, to kind of ruminate on the wisdom of an Islamic New Year, of the Islamic New Year itself, starting with the Hijra and why it was chosen um, or was selected to begin the New Year, the Islamic calendar, uh, that this Hijra was something that commemorated the time when the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam and his companions escaped from Mecca to Medina. You know, they, they held on to their faith and nothing more, not much property to go with them. They sought asylum. They sought refuge and safety in Medina um, and, you know, seeking a space that they could practice freely, that they could practice openly, uh, that this hijrah, this, this migration of sorts was not necessarily in uh, you know a big pompous kind of event with all these fireworks and the same kinds of celebrations that we see when we have the end of a new year here or the end of a, a year here and the beginning of a new year uh, in, in this space. But you think about the Hijra as something that commemorates migration. It commemorates faith. It commemorates a trust in Allah. It commemorates uncertainty. It commemorates hope in the face of that uncertainty. It commemorates safety. It commemorates practice of faith freely especially, and it uh, does so within community. And so the Islamic New Year, as, as, as is understood and as, as is conceptualized in a sense, is a, is a time and space that is founded on values. It's not founded on a numeral or a temporal shift uh, or any kind of uh, superficial aspect of celebration or, or vanity or anything like that, but it's it's a it's it, it's grounded within values. It's grounded within history. It's grounded uh, as a reminder. Um, it's grounded as a reset, as a refresher, um, a reminder of kind of where things began. Um, that we, as a community, that not just those people over there that we have no connection to, but as you know, the spiritual. Uh, successors uh, of an ummah as people who have these spiritual ancestors in this ummah that those are our ancestors who kind of went through that or went through uh, you know the different kinds of trials and tribulations that we started from a mindset of scarcity and not abundance and we started with the space of more appreciation uh, and gratitude than we did with forgetfulness and that each new year we begin each year that we start we would begin in the sense when we think about incorporating this mindset of the Islamic New Year or the Hijra mindset, that each New Year then begins as the Prophet Sallallahu would begin his migration. You know, what thinking about when he was leaving home or any of the companions uh, are leaving home, what things would they value or what things did they value? What would we value when we start the New Year if we were to go on this migration as well? And you know, what would we hope for? What would our resolutions be in an environment and a situation like this? How would we see ourselves changing spiritually, physically, or relationally? You know, and even with these things, though, we need to be practical. You know, we, 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 we need to tangibly think about how do we notice ourselves progressing, improving, and growing. That when you are leaving uh, this, this space in, in the sense of migration, the Prophet and his companions, they couldn't take every single thing with them. They couldn't, uh, you know, just just throw every, every, everything out and just say, we're going to take all of this with us or take nothing with them and say, oh, I'll just, you know, Allah will take care of me and I'll just, we'll just go upon it. No, they, they had to kind of tie their camels, they, but they had to also take what they needed. They had to take what they could, but they also had to prepare accordingly. They had to plan out. They had to 
realize that they they are not uh, in a situation of abundance on this end. They they can only take what they can carry, and you know they have to plan out in different ways. But uh, they 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 started out this journey in so many different aspects that as we start a new year, uh, thinking about what kind of mindset does it bring for us? What kind of mindset would we adopt if we also carry out something similar, even though we have maybe a lot more in abundance, but we think about where our starting point is, where our destination is that we want to get to, and how we can actually get to the, that destination, but in the same space, be able to experience a transformation of sorts. And so when we think about that, when we have uh, these kinds of New Year's resolutions or goals, that even with the best intentions, we might often approach these same New Year's uh you know, resolutions or these, uh, this, this time of the year with generic goals or hopes, you know, maybe we have the, uh, the hopes are along the lines of wanting to become more religious, uh, or more connected to Allah or becoming better Muslims. And these are noble goals. This is not to, you know, disparage that at all. These are noble goals and they should be cultivated and instilled on the daily for everybody. Um, and, but however, when they remain undefined, when they remain a little unclear, it can sometimes lead us to feeling like failures if we don't see ourselves change as we had hoped for, um, or that we hadn't done the things that we had set out to do when we look back on it, that I don't feel like a better Muslim here. I don't think I did this. I don't know if I did that. And they, they, they're hard to quantify. They're hard to measure. And again, they should be you know lifelong goals for all of us. But thinking about in this moment, when we want to build upon something, when we want to make progress, in what ways are they not so conducive to being able to do so. And so there's the other side as well to this, that as when we set these goals, um, when we when we do set out tangible goals that we want to do this, we want to do this, we may fall into the trap of piling on uh, a bunch of different new habits and changes that we want to do because we want to feel like we accomplished something, that we can't accomplish something unless we do something new. And we start to have this mindset of like doing more is more versus doing less is more, or just like, you know, just think about what are we already doing and how can we do it better? You know, we, we start the new year, maybe saying things like, all right, uh, day one, I'm going to go ahead and do the Hajjad every day. I'm going to read uh, an hour of Quran daily, or no, I'm going to read a Joseph Quran every day. I'm going to memorize X, Y, Z chapters every day. Um, and all of so many others, you know, different things. Again, not knocking the goals themselves. These are these, every one of us should strive to do these and so much more, but oftentimes we'll see that the change in the years and feel that with these overarching goals, we need to pile on more and more in order to make it come to fruition. And ultimately we might end up feeling, leaving ourselves burned out, uh, frustrated, and we may even be more disconnected than we did when we start because we see ourselves as a failure. We may get frustrated at the religion, we may get frustrated at the faith, we may get frustrated at so many different things and not end up in a better heart space and head space than we were when we began. And so the hope today is that as we get through this first week of uh, 2024, you know, we, 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 wherever we might be this, we might've entered this year, you know, things are brand spanking new and everything's clean and we're, 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 we're on, we're on a good trajectory. Some of us may have just came out of 2023, just, you know, just kind of uh, spiraling and just kind of rolling in uh, as if what the cat had dragged in, uh, in, in a sense, and, and just feeling that we're kind of a hot mess as we get into 2024. But wherever we might be, as wherever we kind of are, whether we came in, you know, completely new and fresh and, and and ready to get going, or if we just came in kind of dragged in and still trying to figure out what year we're in. The hope is that today, if we take this time to just take a moment for us to ourselves to sit, to think about how we can not only take advantage of where we are and be cognizant of where we are time-wise, space-wise, but how we can truly become our true selves at this starting at this point going forward um, and be being this new us in this new year and how using the substance, using the wisdom of the Islamic New Year, the, the, the hijra mindset, the mindset of the hijra um, helps inform our plans, helps inform for us how we go about this. And so five things for us, inshallah, to take away uh, as we enter into this new year, continue to proceed through this new year, but doing so with the mindset uh, of migration, with the mindset of hijra that as our Prophet Sallallahu had started this uh, this migration. So to we start this new year uh, in, in a similar fashion, that just as we would be embarking on a journey, you know, we're escaping from harm and danger, you know, preserving our life, we're heading towards a place of safety, heading towards a place of 
hope, heading towards a place of new, uh, heading towards a place that that is uh, that is uh, you know a, a beginning of an, a, a symbol of a new beginning. That beginning, first off, with the parallel to the hijra and setting ourselves in that event or in that mindset, we begin as our Prophet ﷺ had taught us very simply with the remembrance of Allah that as the Prophet ﷺ had taught that. Uh, any action that is done without the uttering of uh, the bismillah or the uttering without the uh, name of Allah at its beginning is a action that's incomplete. And that in the same parallel that our Quran tells us that in the remembrance of Allah, in invoking Allah's name and oftentimes pondering and, and invoking Allah's name and remembering Allah, hearts find peace, hearts find rest. That when we think about this aspect of remembrance is very dynamic. It's very active. You know, we 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 oftentimes will see as we uh, conclude in the in the Friday prayers and the khutbas, when we say that remember Allah and Allah will remember you. Remembrance of Allah is the highest virtue. Thinking about that as we start this new year, when we start with Bismillah, we start with beginning in the name of Allah. Um, we start with uh, this action that that is is set to be complete. We also begin with sending praise upon Allah. We start with Alhamdulillah, as is in our salah, that the first things that we utter are in the in in in, in Allah's praise. That uh, we call upon Allah, but we also send praise and gratitude to Allah. That we start ourselves in a mindset of gratitude, start ourselves in a mindset of intentionality and a mindset of appreciation that uh, wherever we are going, however this year is going to start, whatever things are going to look like going ahead, they are not done alone. They are done with Allah. And secondly, alongside this divine remembrance and this intentionality that we have, this gratitude, this mindset that we have of setting ourselves um, in uh the hopes that Allah is here with us and Allah is uh, supporting us and, and alongside us, that we also set our intentions and our hopes in something that is aspirational. What do we hope to become? What is what uh, what are what is that end goal for us? Just as for the Muslims leaving from Hijrah or going on the Hijrah, leaving from Mecca, the end goal being Medina, of being in the community, being with their brothers, their sisters, and the other Muslims, and being in safety, being. Uh, in a space where they could openly worship and not have to worry about persecution, that what is our Medina? Uh, that when we, what do we hope to become? Do we hope to become, you know, better Muslims by the end of the year? Do we hope to become better people? Do we become more connected with Allah? Do we hope to become better spouses, better sons, children's daughter, uh, daughters, you know, husbands, fathers, you know, wives, all these different things. Like, you know, what, what do we, employees, whatever it may be, what do we start uh, set, set our sights to, to be at the end of the new year, just as a hope, a kind of a vision of sorts. Um, and thinking about that, that can be our Medina, that can be our destination. But thirdly, how can we practically act on these hopes in order to get there? Um, how did the Prophet says, how did the people from Mecca get to uh, Medina? They didn't just, you know, get go outside and just start walking in one direction and end up in Medina. They actually know they had to know what direction they were going in. They had to plan out things. They didn't have a GPS. They didn't have uh, you know, all the advanced systems that we have to didn't have Google Maps. Uh, so they had to rely on uh, different elements in order to plan out getting to their destination. And it took time to do that. Uh, but for us, if we want to get to our personal Medina, to our goal for ourselves, what do we, how are we going to do that? That we need to make practical, measurable goals. We need to make things analogous to like SMART goals, which are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-bound goals. But we don't overwhelm ourselves. We we, we in, in operate in, in the wisdom of our Prophet ﷺ who taught us that the religion is in and itself easy. It's not a difficult faith to follow. It's easy and no one burdens themselves in religion, but that it becomes overwhelming for them. So we follow the right course, seek closeness to Allah, we give glad tidings, and we seek help for worship, uh, seek help through worship uh, with Allah in the morning and the evening and part of the night. And thinking about that for our goals in, in the spirit of this, that when we make them gradual, gradual, we make them measurable, we give space for ourselves to, uh, to grow. We don't just make them, uh, you know, conclusive at the onset. We don't just say, okay, I'm going to be doing all of these things. And this is where, this is my goal. So I'm going to be going at, uh, you know, in fifth gear and at optimal speed. 
uh, at, at, at the onset. No, that we build up to something that is sustainable, that we give them that space to grow. We have time to be able to see, did it work? Did it not? We are working into building something that by the end of the year, by the end of our, our, our travel, by the end of our journey is sustainable. It's operating, but it's at full function. Um, and fourthly, how can we set our goals in a way that, uh, that in, in a way that uh, these changes are set in a way in which we can reflect on, them, that we can check our progress, that we can measure them? And what are we doing to incorporate them? Or how are we incorporating them? So we think about in the Islamic tradition, these practices of muraqaba and muhasaba that through muraqaba we have this aspect of watching over oneself in terms of one's heart and one's soul, um, that we, we meditate in that sense, we reflect and we gain insight into our own relation with our uh, creator, with our surroundings. And we really just kind of adapt a, an intentional, uh, really grounded mindset that, that we really do have that reflection in the sense of, of thinking a little bit deeper than just superficially, but also through muhasaba, the accountability we take account of our actions. We we spend this time regularly and we think about uh, moments in which we can do that, that do we have moments in as we are engaging on this travel, thinking about those who had went from Mecca to Medina, they had plotted out times in which they would rest. They would maybe travel um, during the day or they would maybe rest at night or vice versa, but they would have time for rest. They would have time for planning out the next leg of their trip. They'd have time to see how much supplies, rations, or whatnot that they have so that they could make adjustments. So by the end of each day, they would be able to say, okay, how much do we have to be able to get us through the next day? And they would go day by day and thinking for ourselves, if we go in this mindset of day by day versus just, we're just attached to the goals and we're just going to hang on and just keep going um, as long as these goals, uh, this mindset for the goals will drive us versus seeing like, okay, how did I do at the end of the day? How did I do at the end of this week? What does this look like? Is there any way I can kind of measure that? And thinking that how can we get ahead of ourselves um, before uh, all of these different uh, wishes, desires, or stuff, they, they get ahead of us and we just feel like we're left behind. So thinking about in this accountability, this mahasaba, do we have those checkpoints built in throughout whether our day, our week, or even our month or year that we have a time to look back and say, okay, hey, this is what we've got to do um, to maybe improve things. Or, hey, this is how things were going. This looks good. Let's keep doing that. Um, but also deeper reflection and contemplation of that muraqaba, of being able to uh, think about where are we, not just logistically, not just on a spreadsheet, but from a heart-wise, spirit-wise, do we feel different? Do we feel tangible? And if not, how can we how can we do so? And that goes into our fifth point, that can we observe those changes in who we are in the world around us? You know, have we do we feel like we become different people, better people? Do we become, do we feel like we're, more complete in terms of uh, our faith? Uh, do, does our character change? Anything about us there? And, and we think about this aspect that, you know, Allah does not change the condition of a people until they change themselves. And so, Shal, as we conclude here, wants to just lift up that as we take these five points, that we take these five steps, that we begin again, number one, with a mindset of uh, of this hijrah, we start in, with a remembrance of Allah. That the first and foremost thing we do is we begin with uh, reciting not only Allah's name, but we often remember Allah. That this journey is incomplete without Allah, and it's fruitless without Allah. So this embarking on the new year would be also fruitless without Allah. So we take beginning with uh, going with Allah uh, and remembering Allah and starting with Allah as step number one. Step number two, we Think about, in, in essence, uh, alongside this divine remembrance, what is our goal? What is our Medina? Do we want to be better Muslims? Do we want to be whatever it might be? Uh, what is our goal end point that we are setting for ourselves? It can be you know, something a little more uh, of a hope in a sense, but what's our aspiration? What do we want to see ourselves at the end of the line? But number three, how can we make this tangible? What are the goals that we can set? What are those smart goals that we can set that we can measure? that don't overwhelm us, but that we can, that help us get to the space we'd like to get to. Number four, how can we set these goals in a way that we can also build in uh, a moment for pause, a moment for reflection, a moment to account ourselves, see how are we doing to check the progress? And number five, how are we able to observe those changes in, in ourselves, in the world around us? Do we feel different? How can we uh, assess that, thinking about our Prophet Sallallahu and taught that the most complete believer uh, in, in their faith is the one who has the best character. And thinking about 
do we see that with the people around us? Are the people still afraid? Are the people still, you know, seeing us in a different way? How are we assessing ourselves? And so thinking about, can we be more mindful to observe those changes? And do we observe the changes in, uh, in, in, in the impacts that we have, the interactions we have around us? So thinking about, again, that uh, none of this will change uh, if we just feel like we're just going to add on to what's already there. We're just going to build upon, uh, you know, ourselves and just add in new goals and all, all these different things. Uh, and and the foundation itself is not that not set. The foundation itself is a little bit shaky. That a lot does not change our condition until we change ourselves. And so, for as long as this foundation is shaky, uh, or as long as this foundation is just rotted or whatever it is, whatever is built upon it is not going to last. It's not going to be sustainable. So. Uh, this may be a time as well for us to go into the foundation and be rebuilding that, revisiting that, reinforcing that, fixing that as part of this at the beginning of this new year uh, as a hope for the years to come, inshallah. So as we as we hope uh, for this continuous year, this past year, we also pr uh, pray that uh, Allah allows us to be able to see the, this year in its fullness as it, as Allah had allowed us to see the year prior in its fullness. And we ask Allah to bless for us this new year, uh, to make easy for us this year, to forgive our sins, to uh, give uh, forgive us of any shortcomings of this year, to guide us to the right path, guide us all to the Sirat al-Mustaqim, the path upon whom Allah has bestowed favor, and not of those who have incurred Allah's displeasure. We ask Allah to unite our hearts and to remove any seed of discord and to plant and foster the seeds of love, mercy, and unity within us. We ask Allah to allow us all to live up to the aspiration of an ummah, to uh, in this year, with the coming of this year, to be the ummah that the Prophet Sallallahu um, had that sought for us and set an example for us, that we ask Allah to amend for us any uh, wrongs that we might have committed, any harms that we had done, any injustices we carried out, uh, and to provide that justice, that comfort and care uh, to be bestowed upon those who we wronged and to make us the agents of that uh, that blessing and that benefit to others. That Allah allow us to leave this Juma better than we came to it, to allow us to leave every place that we, yeah, that we have come to better than we had entered it, to make from our sins, make for our sins and mistakes and the repentance, uh, the opportunities for growth, the opportunities for growth and purification and excellence, uh, to be there for those, especially who uh, had gone with us through this last year, but did not see the conclusion of that of this last year. Um, that may Allah keep them, may they be with Allah, may they be in, in comfort and security and peace that they had passed on, but their memory has not been lost, and that Allah is their comforter, is their family's comforter, and that may we also be enabled to be their comforter and their family's comforter. And may Allah be with those who uh, have are not enjoying the privileges of how some of us may be with starting a new year, but starting a, uh, a concluding a, a, a new year, um, concluding a year and starting a new year, that there's those of us, our brothers and sisters, who are like those in Palestine and elsewhere that are, uh, who are not guaranteed to start a new year in different ways and are growing in this, under this persecution, occupation, and oppression. May Allah make this year a new year not just for us, but for them and liberating them from that and freeing them from that and, and giving them the future, the hope and the security that uh, that we enjoy and that they all deserve as well. And as our blessed companions and pious predecessors of the Prophet had, uh, had, had offered in prayer that we pray that Allah brings this year for us in security, that Allah brings this year for us in Iman, in Islam, in safety, protection from the shaitan and with Allah's pleasure and nothing but that. Our final prayer is that all praise is due to Allah, Lord of all the worlds.